welcome to Netflix and Kill, the Madhouse Edition. That's right, we're talking about Gotham once again. Oh, oh boy. Uh, and boy, are we timely this time, as this is, the day this is released uh, should be when Gotham Season 4 drops and hits Netflix, so that it can technically count for our Netflix and Kill segment. <laughs> well, are we timely? Because <laughs> that's how we do it. Well, who's who's timely? Why, it's me, Nick the Merc with the mic, and my fellow apologist. Travis. The god of the pod himself, and of course, our special guest that we always like to bring on when we're talking about the goofy Gotham. It is Justin Zarian. Justin, say hi. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> As Justin uh, uh, doing a lot of the impressions this this week of recording. Uh, first, it was, I don't know why. I just I, I I'm in a good mood when I do these kind of things. Just like okay, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I am so excited to talk about one of my favorite superhero shows, if not just straight up my favorite superhero show in the world, uh, Gotham season four. I think I saw who I really am. I've seen my own darkness. You have people around you who care for you. Don't fight this alone. Trust us. Careful, Jim. Sometimes we go looking for things we don't want to find. And if I go down, so will you. You still think you know what I will and won't do? I'll be coming for you, bitch! I need help. That's really why you came to me. Sorry. Sometimes that's enough. They are nuts. The best cure is the laughing cure. Make me laugh. I will not. I want an APB on Ivy Pepper. Finding her is our top priority. First, I was a seed. Then a sprout. Now I've bloomed. That is so Gotham. You have no idea what's really going on at your company, do you? Billionaire boy. Ivy. I'm going to make miracles happen. Who's there? Show yourself! I am the one you cannot escape. (laughs) The one you cannot kill. You. Let's make Gotham our bitch. Now we're talking. Thank you for waiting. Yeah! I need to find the creme de la crazy, which is why I need you. Oh, we are gonna have so much fun together. <laughs> <laughs> or a dark night, as the subtitle mm-hmm. uh, would, would would say it. Actually, it's interesting because uh, this season, season four, is the first season that really hasn't split the narrative into two seasons like the other ones yeah, even which is su- weird i yeah i thought they would, they would split it up into yeah mm-hmm. the other ones split them up into at least two subsections of like previous like uh, season three was mad city and then heroes rise mm-hmm. and then the other one was the rise of the villains and then wrath of the villains as far as like the the, the villain arc of the show and so uh, i find that interesting that they've kind of they've kept the through line of this season like there are still two seasons in here but they right. are a little more connected and more feel like one story than yeah, the like previous. They, they kind of lean into each other yeah uh, yeah there's no clear dividing line like there was in previous seasons right it feels like. right, right. Like, it's not like yeah. oh 12th episode here's a finale and then the next episode we start we start new mm-hmm. justin you are fresh off of this you're much fresher than me and, and travis that finished it up uh like some last months night. ago <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm dying to hear your impressions on season four. What did you think in comparison to some of the previous seasons of Gotham? You know, on one hand, my gut reaction is, ooh, it was so fun. <laughs> but the there's at least a couple notable flaws. It, it, it's so funny. Like, every season of Gotham, as much fun as they are and as much, like, pr- like production value, quality acting, and just general enjoyment I have, there's always, like – Two or three notable issues that keep down every every season. Hmm. So I'm See, just like, I uh, I I actually agree with you, and I think we might have even share one of the uh those issues together because I feel like there's one issue that constantly plagues Gotham. But we'll, well there was one, my my biggest issue did go away after a while, but it was the biggest one that bothered me for a good like half of the season. Oh, so. Okay, 
Well, that's very yeah. interesting. We'll have to get, in, get into that. Um, yeah, so this is the season. Uh, you know what? Why don't we have Justin kind of give the explanation since he's the, the one. Freshest. Yeah, he's the freshest off of it. J- uh, Justin, what is Gotham season four about? Everything. Everything and everything. But, um, what is it not so about? We start- <laughs> well, so the beginning of this uh, season involves... You know, crime has been kind of mitigated because Penguin has introduced, introduced this whole license system where apparently you have to pay to be able to do crimes. Mm-hmm. That way, if you can't, you're actually doing something illegal. But if you can, do what you want. Steal, pillage, whatever, as long as the Penguin is overseeing it. So the problem is that it's undermining the cops and Jim is definitely not feeling good about that. So mm-hmm. he's trying to get, you know, pull all his cards together, get all his teammates on board and try to stop – you know, stop Penguin from doing this. Meanwhile, Bruce is starting his own little, you know, very, very basic origins of him becoming Batman, like we saw in the first season, I mean, well, in the third season. Mm-hmm. And that's not going quite so well just yet. So it's, you know, he's still trying to figure out his his footing here. And then meanwhile, there's like seven other subplots going on <laughs> right. at any given point in this season. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, there's one involving Sophia Falcone, Falcone's daughter coming back to kind of challenge Penguin's title to the throne. Which well, even better that Jim Jim recruits her to help him out in this scene. So right. yeah, well, kind of yeah. like he goes to he's going to he went to Falcone himself, and she kind of came with essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then oh yeah, and a uh, Riddler uh, gets unfrozen eventually. Which I mean, surprise, I mean, he's actually going to get come back. Like, <laughs> He's like one of the best parts of the show, honestly. Honestly, it happens oh, really yeah. fast. Like, it happens a lot faster than I even thought it would. Yeah, it was like second or third episode when that <laughs> that crazy fangirl who rescues him, I'm just like, oh, geez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then there's also uh, the Professor Pig storyline that comes around and actually gets involved in the, in the main plot more than you might think. Um, that was so much fun this season. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd say... <laughs> I, I, I love that actor so much. He's just so great. <laughs> yeah, he's got, uh, they change up Professor Pig a little bit, mm. uh, to, to make him fit Gotham a little bit more. And it, like, it's really fun, like, the, the, the twists and turns that character takes. Um, and Raz al Ghul is kind of still around. Well, Raz, Raish. Ra- Raish Raish. Al Ghul. <laughs> or Raz. Say it however or, 20 other times you want it because there's. Dude, like... they can't even get consistent in this show. I know. <laughs> some people call him Raz, some people call him Raish. Sometimes in the same scene. Yeah, it's like, well, <laughs> motherfucker, you, you're the, at least pick one in your show. What the fuck am I supposed to call this guy? But. I don't know, Gotham accents, you know, they're all crazy. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, he shows up and he's, it's, he's pretty early to the whole Bruce Wayne is gonna be the, um, uh, successor to my, uh, League of Shadows throne. Mm-hmm. Like that, that comes into an early plot element and you're kind of like, isn't he like, you know, 14, 15? I forget how old Bruce is. Yeah. Well, the actor, la- you know, last time we recorded this was 17. So I'm sure he's like, yeah, like 17, 18 in this continuity or something. Yeah. And so you're kind of like, wait, this seems a little early, but still we get to, uh, uh, Rachel Ghoul and kind of, uh, I can't decide. Is this the first time we have legit magic on the show? Like there's been weird, um, there's been weird stuff before, but yeah. I, I guess this might be the first time we've had. It's honestly, it feels so of a piece that it doesn't really yeah, even I, I, doesn't even feel like a blip on the radar. I feel at this point in Gotham, yeah. anything can happen. We're just like, yeah, okay, cool. I mean, seriously, we watched a season where somebody falls into a swamp, and gets resurrected as a zombie. Yeah, I mean, that's anything Solomon can happen. Grundy, in show. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like this one. Also, too. apparently. Headshots don't kill people anymore because at least two or three people get ki- you know shot in the forehead and they just go into comas apparently. Mm. So, mm-hmm. well, so yeah, anything goes in the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Butch does get like resurrected, kind of, sorta, and then through swamp, like <laughs> I won't say swamp magic because it magic. is more like oh, it's chemicals <laughs> in the water. Ooh, like it's magic. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, and it like. It- <laughs> It's so weird. Uh, and they, they managed to do both the Hulk-like Solomon, dumb Solomon Grundy story and the, he's a gangster, uh, uh, Cyrus Gold, uh, story as well mm. at a certain points. And it's, I mean, Which they've, I they've got worked. 22 episodes, I mean. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Again, just like last season, so much happens in 22 episodes. Yeah. Like they just they, you would not be you would not believe where it starts and where it ends after everything that happens in the season. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to skip over stuff liberally uh throughout this. Well, this. we probably have to talk about one of the major bad parts about the first half. Oh yeah, what's Okay, I'm, I'm curious. Which one which one? Oh, okay. Yeah, which one is that? Um yeah, when did that element come in? Was it in the first half or was it like the start of the second half? The first half. Okay, because he does end up like, uh, you know, mild spoilers. He does end up actually killing Rachel Ghoul very early in this season. Mm-hmm. Like it actually is like, whoa, uh, okay, like like fourth or fifth episode, yeah. Because because you're like you know watching Gotham and you're like uh, you you think you got a handle on the continuity, but then you remember like Gotham does its own thing. And, uh, Gotham doesn't care about plot structure or season structure. It doesn't care when things happen. It just happens. He, like, Gotham doesn't give a shit. Mm. So then, like, <laughs> so then you're like, holy shit, I can't believe they did this. But then it does lead to one of my least favorite elements, which is Angsty Bruce. Mm. And Angsty yeah, Bruce. Yeah, this was the weakest part of the whole season. Angsty Bruce far. is not a fun Bruce to watch. No. Uh, nope. he's addicted. Well, cause it's the same note. It's the exact same note every single time when they do it. And it's just like, okay, we get it. He's doing his Aaron Paul thing from Breaking Bad. Get on with it. Yeah. And then, like, he's addicted to Selena for no reason, which puts their relationship on the outs for, like, the upteenth time. Mm-hmm. And their back and forth is getting so tedious as well of, like, are they friends? Are they romantically involved? Do they even like each other this episode? Whatever. Um, you know what I did like? I actually liked the, he was playing up the billionaire playboy thing in one of the earlier episodes mm-hmm. to buy that knife. Like to, oh yeah, to the auction. <laughs> and I thought like, that's funny. Like that's like him. Yeah, that's the origin of playboy Bruce Wayne of him putting on the, the mask. And right. I was like, Oh, that's, that's cool. We're, we're seeing that origin as well. But then he falls into that impression of himself, and it just sucks. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he, like, fires Alfred, uh, who goes on his own thing, like, his own journey this season as well. Mm-hmm. And Jim, uh, is still doing good. He's, he, you know, you know what? I, I, I gotta say, he's a lot better this season than he was last season. Like, I think the best thing that could have happened to him is to get rid of Lee from his plot line. Well, they did for a while. Until they didn't. Well, e- even when they brought her back, at least she's not moping about it so much. Just like, oh, I don't know if she loves me, or I don't know if this is gonna go on. Well, it's she's like, such a radically just- different character that I can't even help blame. Like, look, just to, whatever, do your own thing, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, and. It's funny because uh, Jim has always been, like, the kind of more boring character on this show because he's forced to be the straight man of this zany world. So <laughs> having him go through an arc here with uh, hooking up with Sophia Falcone and, uh, you know, feel a little bit guilty about some of his actions later and kind of being... I, I love how in the opening with the, the crime uh, licenses... Like, he's the only cop mm-hmm. that actually goes against that thing. Yeah. Because that- in Gotham, it's such a terrible place. They're like, no, this is actually reducing crime rates. <laughs> Explain to me how that works. It's so, Gotham. Le- legalized- well, I mean, technically, if they're not illegal, it, it, you know, if they're not illegal, then technically there's no need for the cops to get involved. Oh, no I see. They for- don't count as crimes if they're doing it with the licenses. That seems ridiculous. It, no, it's stupid. It's ridiculous, but that's just how it is in this one. So. Okay, whatever. Um... And so Jim takes to the streets, and not only it, and again, it feels like, again, like the upteenth time where the everyone, he's the only good cop in the precinct, mm-hmm. which is like, wait, how many times are we going to do this? Right. Like, where? I, I do like that they definitively stop that in the season, where they're just like, okay, now the cops are totally on his side. It does feel <laughs> you know? like, finally, they've they've put Jim in the leadership position, and it seems a little more permanent. Um, also because they killed, like, the seventh commissioner in this show, apparently. So. Yeah, and uh, uh, Harvey it was kind of, like, the de facto leader for a while, too, until he uh, fucks up and uh, fucks up a raid on, on Professor Pig, right. and he's got to go that into his... That really bad. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, so, so Jim gets a much more leadership role and finally gets the respect of the precinct yet again like it seems like every finale he gets he gets the respect and then loses it somewhere in between seasons um and uh yeah we get the origins of a couple more supervillains. i think this is the one where scarecrow actually comes into his own 
Yeah. yeah, it's a first and second episode are the big ones where they bring back Jonathan Crane and then he becomes Scarecrow and then he disappears until the very fat last few episodes of the season. Yes. Um, <laughs> and the costume he uses goes through many iterations, all of them pretty ridiculous looking. Like, though I did, I have to admit that the last one that they showed at the very end of the season was kind of cool. Yeah, the, the last yeah. one it's the is best one of the last them. one is pretty okay. I like the hat. I like that they have him have the hat. Yeah, yeah. I think the problem is the eyes. The eyes seem fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like he, I mean, they could either go with the you know obvious allusions to like the Arkham Scarecrow, where he has like the sewed up eyes, or so. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure they're trying to be practical and sensible for screen camera and stuff. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think <laughs> if like they should put a digital effect and just white out his eyes, like, <laughs> and not even worry about it. Like do the Deadpool thing and just like and and just. Make his eyes even move and change shape or whatever <laughs> for expression. I also love how they d- they thought that we wouldn't notice that they recast actors uh, between that first part and that second part. Yeah, we noticed. <laughs> <laughs> that guy doesn't apparently even have there the was, there same some... body type. No. Yeah, there was some schedule conflict. Apparently, the actor couldn't come back. So they're like, well, we can't wait for him. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> uh, I-, I love, you know, and then we get to introduce to Professor Pig early, too, and he holds uh penguin and all these guys hostage in, in a really cool episode penguin has a new uh little uh, kid sidekick sort of thing that's martine mm-hmm. <laughs> um zaz is back mm-hmm. uh zaz dude is zaz kicks butt this season he is so good like they finally found out it's like he's a secret weapon on this show like for reals yeah, his he his absence has been felt in the previous seasons. For whatever reason, he dips in and out of Gotham, and it's probably I, I'm assuming it was probably scheduling conflicts, like when he was shooting with Barry or something. Mm. But when I think Barry helped them see, like, oh, this guy's really talented too. God, that guy's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got a great presence to him. He whenever he enters the room, it's just kind of like he feel he's he's weird, silly, and yet menacing. He's just. He's got a great, great character to play with. Um, and then they they found that like, well, he's not ridiculous enough, so let's give him a sidekick with that other black um, hitman that they introduced into the show, right? <laughs> well, they decide to help hunt down Professor Pig with the uh, the help of like mercenaries or whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like that goes about as well as you think it's gonna. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, and yeah, like there's uh, Barbara Keen comes back because yep, of Lazarus she, Pits. She's still around. <laughs> Um, yep. so I'll tell you what, here's the weak, some of the weaker parts of the show for me is that Barbara Keen is back and it feels like, do we really need her back at all? Um, she gets better later when she finally gets this Amazonian, uh, uh, assassins, a league of assassins thing going on mm-hmm. for her, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, like her and Lee, it seems like they don't know what to do, but they like enough to keep them around. Yeah. Yeah, but see, like, at least Lee had Ed with her, so it's like, it, it kind of made her a little bit better because she could bounce off him, but yeah, Barbara, Barbara goes back and forth because they, they clearly didn't plan that Barbara's gonna be around this whole time, right. or at least in this role. Well, I don't think they planned for anything in this show. <laughs> well, t- sure, to be fair, but at least, at least they're trying. Like, the, the thing I like about the show is that they're willing to experiment. They're willing to go, okay, if this isn't working right now, let's do something different with it. Let's pair up somebody else with somebody else, or let's put them in a different situation. See what, yeah. just see if it works, kind of thing. <laughs> and yeah, Barbara and uh, her siren buddies uh, kind of open up their own weapon shop for a little bit, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I forget what her name is. The other chick, Tabitha. Uh, yeah. Tabitha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's also still around. She doesn't have a whole lot to do other than. Uh, try and, uh, wake up Butch from his Grundy coma. Um, <laughs> Lee is, Lee is running the Narrows because, like, yeah, they- Yeah, it's like, did, wasn't you making a big point that she was leaving Gotham? And then shortly, <laughs> right after that, it's like, oh yeah, I, I, I never really left. I, I never left, <laughs> I sure went to the worst part of Gotham. Yeah, that felt like a real fast rewrite of like, we need to keep this character on the show because, they're dating the main star, <laughs> she, and we... Yeah, she's married to the main actor. Come on. Come on. And, and like, I... So that feels forced for a while. I mean, the whole Ed uh, losing his intelligence and kind of need, needing to be babysit by her. It's like, okay, and then he falls in love with her, which I get, because he is so needy and falls in love with anyone that shows him any attention. Uh, and But yet, I don't get with her... I guess trying to manipulate him or maybe falling in love with him. Cause it's like, 
he and she brings up you did kill my best friend like mm. that's a thing that you did mm. so yeah. i don't well that's why she always doesn't trust him ultimately but it's like yeah it does seem like where he's maybe she's still in, like got the re- residual effect of the germs tetch virus she's still got that dark side to her but it it's an interesting back and forth which i liked overall but it was a little bit like hmm where's this going mm. <laughs> yeah yeah um and then I liked that Penguin or uh, the relationship between Penguin and Riddler this season too of like the Riddler actually taking a back seat to Edward Nigma this time around. Right. And like... Uh, at least for a while. At least for a while, yeah. And then suddenly he gets tricked for, uh, via Penguin of like the, the Riddler is on Penguin's side, but Edward Nigma is not, which is a f- just a fun dynamic that when I was watching the show, I can't, like I cannot believe that they're pulling this mm-hmm. off. Of like, oh, and even more ridiculous, at one point, Ed, uh, Riddler takes over, and then Ed is the virus in his mind that's taking over him. Yeah. I'm <laughs> just like, this is just insane, like, and I love it. Yeah, and that actor is great for doing, like, how he does that, too. Yeah, I think his name is, like, uh, Corey Michael Smith or something like that. That dude, he's just, he's so cool. He's so fun. Mm-hmm. Um, Penguin gets an interesting story arc of, you know, the rise and fall that seems to happen to him every season as well, of being on top. <laughs> And then not, and then being on top again, and then going and then falling, and like, yeah, I'm sure the people of Arkham just like, oh, we kept your bed warm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, he, I, you know what I loved about it is that when the season opens, he even goes to the mayor, like, oh yeah, I used to have your job like a couple months, ba- a couple months back before I, uh, you know, I was pronounced dead, presumed dead, and you're kind of like, how the fuck does this work in Gotham where people come back to life so constantly? Yeah, what's the paperwork like? Honestly, like, a nightmare, I imagine. Yeah, just. <laughs> yeah. Like, just trying to work out the logistics of it, like, cause, like, their mayor died, like, a couple months ago, and then just came back, and now is, seems to still be kind of running things, but is no longer mayor, like, I, I don't know, it, 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 it feels very confusing, um, but, I, uh, yeah, dude, geez, I just love this show, this, this, <laughs> this season has been crazy, um, we're only in the first half. Yeah, well, I, th- you know, I think one of the big things about this season is that the momentum of the season has been a lot more consistent. Because previous seasons had these, well, except for Bruce's arc, that was still the weakest part mm-hmm. of the first half of the season, at least. Uh-huh. But it feels like the story and the drive of the narrative is a lot more consistent throughout. Like, there's always something happening, pushing people forward for most of the show. Yeah, uh, I would still say that this might actually be my second favorite season of Gotham. I think still. Se- oh, well, what's your first? I'm curious. Uh, season two. I feel season two was when okay. they were cooking on uh, on all cylinders, like they uh, <laughs> cooking with mustard gas. <laughs> yeah, they. It, I felt lulls in this one, like with Bruce's storyline. I felt like they were treading water with Barbara and Lee at certain points before they knew exactly where to go. And season two felt like everyone kind of knew, but like we had crazy Barbara. Uh, for the first time, and it was still new and fresh. fresh. Yeah, uh, Lee was just introduced, so she wasn't also tired as well, and she was actually a really fun character, just a nice, uh, character for Jim to kind of bounce off of. Um, and we had the first introduction to Jeremiah, which was, or no, not Jeremiah, but uh, Jerome. Uh, and that's that's where I want to get to too is that Jerome play, plays in this second season, uh, where he's uh wants to team up with Penguin for a little bit. Until he forgets about that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and then he, uh, has a whole elaborate plot with all the different villains of, uh, Arkham Asylum, uh, helping him out. And, uh, it turns out that his grand scheme is to find this mysterious benefactor that's been kind of behind the scenes in Gotham, like this mysterious wealthy guy, uh, so, sort of genius. And it turns out it's his fucking twin brother. <laughs> which is just amazing because it just gets a chance for the Gotham same. is so much a soap opera. They pulled out the twin brother trope. Right? I know. Yes. Like it's like the first thing I thought of. Like you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, uh, he uh, faces off with his brother there, and uh, it 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 culminates in this big like poisonous Joker gas blimp uh, ride, which like, you know, awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, cause why not? <laughs> cause it, it felt, oh man, it felt very much Batman the Animated Series of like this bl- out of control blimp that Penguin's gotta try and, and steer out of control while Jim fights, uh, uh Jerome <laughs> on the ground. And, uh, you know, like it, he's never been more, uh, Mal- Machiavellian Joker than he was in that episode, mm. which I thought was great. And, 
Yeah, I, I I like that, and I liked eventually uh, where it, it turns out like we t- we put the switch, and uh, you know, uh, Jerome finally gets one over on Jeremiah, and we uh, see a switch in that character as well, which I I thought at first I thought was very interesting, but then I thought kind of was left me a little bit cold. We'll have to see how that works for me. Well, I think the thing that they showed is that they really want to distinguish why these guys are two different Jokers. Like, they're similar in, like, psychology and craziness in some degree, but then it's like, well, where, you know, Jerome's, you know, crazy is more derived on his charisma and his, you know, Machiavellian attitude. Jeremiah is more like the cold, calculating crazy kind of thing. Like, the guy who's just, like, that wide-eyed, mile-long stare kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I see, like, I, I like the angle they're going with it. It it was too short, I would say. That's probably the biggest thing about it. But... It, it was nice to see that he wasn't just a carbon copy of the same exact character, you know? Yeah, I mean, they, he gets, he gets the Joker gas, like some sort of refined version of it, and he, it does fuck him up and actually turn him into, like, the, the white painted face Joker that we're more used to. Right. Although it, it didn't change as much as people think, apparently, because that was the whole thing where he's like, Oh well, I was already crazy. He just gave me a face paint. So, <laughs> well, like he, well, his argument is that the gas did not work on him, and that right. he's the, he drove him sane. Like he was the most sane, yeah. and I was like, "Uh, you are acting nuts, my friend." Mm. Like, like it's more. I, I kind of felt more like, "Oh no, it made you crazier. You just you're so crazy, you don't realize you're crazy." Yeah, yeah, because I mean, he there was stuff off about him even from the first moment he was introduced. Where you're like, so he's not telling us the whole truth about stuff. He's kind of they're hinting at things where he's like. Oh yeah, my you know, uh Jerome used to set my bed on fire, he used to do this stuff, and then Jerome confronts him, he's like, You know you made all that stuff up, right? <laughs> I think yeah, it was hard to tell what was Jerome messing with him and what was actually re- what was actually real. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. And I uh, I also like the introduction to what might be Harley Quinn of in his assistant. Like Oh, uh, Echo. Like yeah, his badass assistant that just gets hypnotized at one point and I guess we just leave that for a while. Yeah. Um and, uh, yeah, I, do, I just feel like Jerome reminds me of Batman the Animated Series Joker, and Jer- Jeremiah reminds me of all-star Batman and Robin Joker, of, like, I don't smile. And it's like, eh. Like, I, I prefer the guy with more personality mm. um, than anything else. But Sure, but it does speak a lot to uh, Cameron Monaghan's range as an actor, too, that he could co- convey such different characters pretty organically, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I, I would actually, honestly, I would actually prefer more twin brothers or twin siblings on the show uh, to bring people back <laughs> in different ways. Or kind of like... Jim Gordon's twin brother will be John Gordon. Or, or, or like kind of like what Flash does with the alternate Earths, of like bringing in alternate uh, Earth people so mm. they can keep the actor around. Like, because it, it does feel like it giving a chance for the actor to do for, more fresh stuff. Because I'll tell you what, the, one of the things about Barbara coming back this season is that she feels less crazy. Yeah. Like, she feels much more just kind of, like, evil, I guess. And Would you think being resurrected, the, like, you know, through uh, Ra- Rachel Ghoul's means would make you more crazy, as we've seen with Red Hood? It's Well, it was supposed to, like, that's kind of what it's supposed to do, Um, but... I guess that this one is just kind of a respawn. It doesn't seem to affect you but much at all. Or maybe it's because she yeah. was the heir to the demon's head or something. Who knows? Sure. Although, but still, Bruce is the heir to yeah, the demon's head. Yeah, well, she was. She uh, had they, the demon's head, or I don't know. Yeah, they, they don't know exactly what they're doing with that either. Like, the demon's head was such a big deal for a while, and then it's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... I, I mean, I, I preferred Barbara a little more uh, unhinged, and I thought, like, last... I think, uh, like, the last season when I saw some of the goodbyes to the characters, like Lee saying goodbye after season three, and Barbara just getting killed, I was kind of like, yeah, this these are good send-offs for these characters, and maybe we should get some new ones in here, because mm. they're, like, it feels like their character is... In, and even the show realizes that they can't keep them the same, that their character arcs were done, because they give them brand new... They give them... They almost feel all, like, brand new characters. Like, Barbara does not feel like the same in this season as she was in the previous seasons, and Lee definitely doesn't feel like the same. Right. Yeah. Can you, you, can you even imagine season two Lee even meeting season four Lee? No. Like, it's, it, it's ridiculous how much she has become, like, this gangster uh, of the Narrows, but like a, uh, benevolent gangster. The Doc. <laughs> um. The good criminal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, her face off with Sophia. Oh, yeah. Also, they get bored with Sophia Falcone. A couple episodes into the second half. Well, she's just so... She's just a gangster. I mean, Gotham's kind of over gangsters by now. Like, just regular gangsters. 
it's funny where, you know, her dad was the most straight-faced character in this whole show, where it's like, he thinks he's in a real crime drama and, and not a Batman story or a crazy, go- you know, mm-hmm. crazy Batman story. So Sophia is kind of an extension almost of that same character he was in the first season. And at some point they're like, yeah, we're kind of done with her. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't need her around anymore. Although, it does uh, give an interesting rise story to Penguin, where he has to team up with... Uh, uh, Jerome and them during their whole breakout, right? Which is a fun. So it did seem like he got he had a little sideline that second half of the season. Which I mean, obviously he plays a huge part in the first part, and then at some point it's like, well, he's just trying to kind of not die pretty much for the rest of the season. Well, he teams up with uh, Butch uh, or, or Grundy for a little bit too, so that he can kind of get some muscle back and and work his way up. Um, but okay, I gotta say too, also with Grundy. Uh, I like how they do Grundy overall with this, but the stupidest thing I couldn't get over from the very first moment it happened, so when he finally gets out of the swamp and he meets the group of people where he steals the clothes and starts to form his identity, mm-hmm. why in the world are these grown men sitting around a campfire listening to nursery rhymes on a record player? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I couldn't get that for the life of me. I thought they were like vagrants this. and that they were just listening to whatever. That was like just S- still it, it was really goofy. <laughs> like they were just listening <laughs> like they had a record player and they were just listening to whatever it was on it. Look, I I question why that record player has the big old style megaphone on it and they have they <laughs> again and they obviously Gotham, have fucking th- cell phones in this universe. Yeah, Gotham is in this weird like in between time zone t- like d- different decades mm. where it's just like what I don't even I know. I can ask you when does Gotham take place? <laughs> it doesn't. It's I <laughs> challenge you 1950 <laughs> 67. I don't know. But also somehow in the Blade Runner universe. Right. Like where we have fucking <laughs> freeze of uh, freeze technology. Like this is ridiculous. And then we have yeah, we have cell phones, but no internet. Still. Mm-hmm. Still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, <laughs> uh, I love, uh, yeah, like I said, I love Jerome. I love his kind of final curtain call in this season. And, uh, I forget some, any of the new villains that they might, like, I think some old villains pop up for an episode or two. Right. Well, the other thing is, like, the only major new villain other than Sophia is Professor Pig. Because he, he takes up, like, a good five, six episode run. And for the most part, that was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole season, along with the Jerome stuff. Yeah. Where, you know, because that actor, uh, Michael Cerverus, he's just, there's just something about it where he, <laughs> it wasn't enough for him to play this, you know, the theatrical bad guy as he was. <laughs> and then at some point he starts putting on impersonations where he's, like, a southern dude and he's uh, an Italian dude and he's, like, he plays, like, so many different roles in this season. It was really, really fun mm. to watch. Just this crazy gonzo serial killer storyline. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then, of course, because it's got them, they have to cook people into pies. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again. Like, I'm surprised Penguin didn't turn him like, Look, I've already done this before. I know how this goes. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> Look, this is Gotham, Gotham, dude. Catch up. What happened with Zaz, anyway? <laughs> Zaz, because uh, I know he hooked up with Sophia, but did we see him after that? I forget. Well, the last thing we saw him is when uh they took down Sophia and him and the other uh, black hitman dude, uh, they go on the run because they're like, ah, well, we're done. You want to go get a drink? <laughs> <laughs> Which is literally more or less what he said, so. Okay, I was trying to remember exactly what happened with Zaz. I'm sure he'll be back. He'll be back. Yeah, well, he's he's a great character, so. Though also, I kind of wish they would bring back the fact that, like, Zaz's defining point is that he keeps a tally mark on his body for every kill he makes. Mm. We haven't seen that since season one. You know, just just show it. Just, just allude to it a little bit next well, time. Well, they keep showing him in this entire leather getup, which covers most of his torso. So, oh sure, but he even did that in the first season where he like roll his sleeve up and go like, you know, 17 and you know, like count down each one. Mm-hmm. I just think it's probably a makeup thing. It's probably just easier to do the to cut corners and do the the leather thing. Plus, I I don't think I, I think everyone watching kind of knows who Zaz like either they know who Zaz is or they don't really care about the the tally marks on his body. Yeah. Yeah, they they've accepted new Zaz. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I mean, and, uh, Gotham has kind of established their own characters, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for. Unless you want to talk, about, uh, you know, we want to go into the spoiler section because there's some other stuff that happens later in the season that I don't want well, to spoil. For there's people. one major, there's one major element we forgot all about was Poison Ivy. Oh right, okay. So they switched up Poison Ivy's actress yet again. Yeah, and um, it's super which obvious. I'm glad because. 
I like this actress way better. She it's, personally, it's a lot closer to the Poison Ivy we know from the comics and or the cartoons or any other thing like that. Yeah, but at the same time, you still can't forget the fact that she started off as a kid. I think we th- their main goal is to try and spend enough time and uh, go- put through enough iterations that you forget. Like, even how old she's supposed to be, mm. or how old, men- like, mentally she's supposed to be. Like, she's almost a, a creature now. Like, she's, like, been reborn as a new being. Well, she's now uh, a fully an eco-terrorist, uh, and, like, that's that makes sense. That's more consistent with her character. Uh, yeah. And it's more interesting than, I. oh, I'm suddenly all, I'm grown up and hot now, let me take advantage of that. Uh, and... Yeah, like she even uh 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 like Selena tries to help her out a little bit and is like you you mean you don't even like resemble my friend anymore. Um it's still weird that like they they've like aged up this this child into being the uh sex symbol, sex symbol that poison ivy is supposed to be. Right. But they kind of mess with their powers a little bit where it's like no, they just like me. Like I think I <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> well, they even like they show like the all the the everyone in the family was all into like was all into her. Right, like there was there was no exceptions. Like in some of the continuity, it's usually it's only men that seem to be mm-hmm. affected. In this one, it is like everyone is is buying into what Poison Ivy is selling. Yeah, but again, it's- which that was one of my favorite parts was um when they go to the police station and everyone in the police station has been hypnotized by her. It's like isn't she so cool? Oh, oh boy, yeah, so cool. we don't like you back talking her. <laughs> My, I thought that my weirdest start was when they, she came into that family and then the kids were also under her spell. Yeah. And I was like, ugh. Oh, yeah. And that's they weird. Were like, <laughs> they were paralyzed as she watched them, like, kill the father. Right. Well. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's, I guess for me, I'm way used to Poison Ivy's powers being very Sexy. seductive and yeah. sexual. So they, yeah, and they do mention it in the dialogue of saying, like, oh, no, it's more like the, she has a giant fan club. Like, mm. they're all just worship her and are like, uh, and, and like that. So it does take my brain to, to uh a little while to catch up to it because otherwise it's kind of like everyone wanting to fuck Ivy, right? Which is again, I think a thing they want to avoid because they still are like, well, we've changed her again, but she's still kind of a kid, so we don't want to make her powers uber sexual, but yet we want to keep yeah. her kind of similar. I don't know. I think Poison Ivy is the best she's ever been. She's still kind of a clusterfuck mm-hmm. that I think they've they've tried to course correct a bunch of times. Yep, yeah, that's the problem is that yeah, they, they kind they, of like they walk themselves into this trap. Yeah. Yeah, they're trying to salvage what they can with a bad decision they made early on. So And I get it. I and they can't really take it back or and they can only like try and fix it uh in the future. And I mean, I guess you know what, if I squint my eyes is close enough. Like it's she's yeah. she's pretty close to the character. They haven't really done anything too squicky with her actually having sex with anyone. Mm. Well, I think if they had introduced this version of her, like, like instead of having her in the first season, just introduce this character, like, now, we probably wouldn't question it that much, because it's going to be like, this is a weird version of Ivy, but it's Gotham. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, we'd probably accept it without batting an eye, to be completely honest. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze is still boring. Um... The- he gets more to do this season, but just only like like a step forward. It's like okay, at least he has like a lab, and he's got some proactiveness to him. Which, and they also hint that he's going to be more proactive next season, but we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I doubt that very highly. They they've obviously like they fucked up when they're like ah, we shouldn't have killed Nora Freeze and and uh, nixed any. I told you guys, I told you in that review that that was a bad idea. Yeah, and it was like I in at first it seems interesting because it's so a, a radical um change to his character, but then you realize like ah. We killed everything that made him sympathetic. Right. Now and that he's was, just a villain. Yep. And that was the only thing that really made Freeze kind of neat was his sympathetic backstory and, like, his cold, meticulous nature. Yeah. Which also, apparently, they don't know what to do with Firefly anymore. And it's so weird that, like, okay, so you got this really powerful flamethrower, but the only thing she ever does is shoot that flamethrower above people's heads. Right. Like, she never actually shoots it anywhere else other than up in the air. Well, so it's like, from what I understand from stunt people, it's dangerous and kind of expensive to light people on fire. <laughs> so well i know like yeah but still it's like you, you gotta find a way to cheat around that which is just actually aiming at people not just going look at me i got scary fire well, it's kind of like how heat wave on legends of tomorrow keeps knocking people out with his he- with his heat gun and you're like how are they he's not burning people alive <laughs> like how is he not melting people with that fucking heat gun 
Oh yeah, and also thinking of that too. One thing I I messaged you about uh, with Gotham, it's like so Jim is just the master of the one punch man technique, where like literally there's no bad guy you can't stop with just a good clock to the jaw oh, yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, it, it, for whatever reason, Jim, it, it, like, he's the only, not only is he the only competent cop in Gotham, he's the only one that's, like, super cop. Like, he he is uh, special healing powers, he's basically Wolverine mixed mm-hmm. in with Captain America, uh, he can dodge in and out, and he's a, he's a crack shot, and he's a great, like, physical fist fighter. Like, he is... He's he, just a catch-all. <laughs> he, he's the best, man. He's fucking... Like, it'd be weird. Like, it's weird that we're watching Bruce Wayne. I'm like... Uh, and it's like, no, Jim is way closer yeah, yeah, to give Batman. Him a mask. Like, he... Yeah. They should really throw the mask on Jim, because he is way more the superhero of this show than anyone else. <laughs> yeah, as long as they don't do that whole Batman Robo Bunny Ears suit thing they did in the comics. Oh, then, that's yeah. right. <laughs> I forgot about that. Ba- Jim Gordon was Batman for a while. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. This is the origin of Bat- <laughs> Jim Gordon's Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, no. You know, I also say, too, that I kind of like Jervis Tetch a little bit better this season now that he's not the forefront of the plot. Where it's like, man, I'll tell you okay, what. Somehow he's more he's more menacing when he's in the sidelines. He's fun when he's a side character. I well, still kind of rolled my eyes when he showed back up because I was so sick of him from last season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I I did like him a little bit more that when he doesn't take up as much space when mm. he's sharing when he's sharing screen with a bunch of the other crazies from uh, uh, Arkham, Arkham Asylum. Uh, it was oh I also loved Jerome and Penguin meeting for the first time. I thought that was pretty fun <laughs> of like this whole mime act or whatever, and then like uh, Penguin beating the shit out of him, which was Make which was fun. Laugh. Yeah, it's like make me laugh. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and I love it how his, you know, what's his name? Uh, Jerome's voice is so much more Heath Ledger than ever this season too. Just doing that whole accent like he does. <laughs> well, they keep fucking him up more and more. Like they, like they ripped his face off and they like stapled it back on. They brought him back from the dead, and then they he's they, been through a rough time. They burn his throat like his with hot soup. His skin is like leathery. Like yeah. <laughs> and and so like he he acts like a guy that's been through the shit kind of. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, is there, I mean, obviously there's a lot of story here, but is there anything big or Well, ma- there's, do you, you don't want to go through every single 22 episodes here? Like, <laughs> like, like I want to just keep it to the, the main points here. We could be here all day trying to figure out some of this random shit that happens. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I will say that at least Bruce was weak this season, but he got a little better once he lightened up a bit. Although I did love it too, where he tries to go back to apologize to Alfred, just like, I really need your help. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? And Alfred just kind of looked at him and goes, no! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Good for you, Alfred. Good for you. You're a dick master B. Uh, you're a meal master D. Uh, oh, I also noticed too that Alfred went through like a huge weight loss in between seasons, it looked like. Like, like he looked notably thinner between the, the mid-season break. Hmm. Yeah, I think he might have gone through some sort of workout regime or something. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but good for, for, good for Pertwee. Uh, yeah. looking good. So no, that, that, that's mostly all I gotta say. Most everything else I have to say is like nitpicky, fun, jokey elements. Oh, you know, just thinking too. What, what were some of your guys' favorite kills this season? Just thinking about Ooh, that. Ooh, boy. Well, I actually like a, like a lot of the Professor Pig stuff. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Like his were like gruesome and kind of weird. And like, they were like the, like the kind of like a saw level villain, which we never really saw in the, like, he was the right level of serial killer that I feel like Gotham always needed. So I, I like I really like the foul confrontation with him. Uh or not I suppose not the foul confrontation, but where um where they fuck up and like all police kind of guy. Like, oh yeah, where Harvey first fucks up. Yeah. And then he walks them into the uh, basically a death trap of a building and that a was, bunch of people get fucking killed. That's it's horrible, but it was <laughs> kind of great. Oh yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> it was Jim's big moment of going, I told you so. Yep. Um other than th- oh, I also love that w- because it's Michael Cerveris and he's a famous Broadway actor. They had to give him one big scene where he sings to them too, <laughs> just like "You Had It Coming." Yeah, it's like Chicago is not the song I would have picked for Professor Pig, but sure, why not? <laughs> that that was fun. Although I did like the new female assassins league in League of Assassins as well, when they like proved their loyalty to uh, what was it, Barbara Keen or something. Mm. Of just like, uh, like, uh, like, it looked like Barbara Keen was about to get turned on by the League of Assassins, and it's like, well, and she, she basically resigned her fate too, like, well, I'm fucked. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's nothing I can do. When all of a sudden, 
uh, she gets out of it, like, miracle style gets out of it by the, the league, uh, the, the female league turning on everybody, uh, turning on their own, or like, yeah, maybe men were not our answer of leading the league here. <laughs> and she gets her own Amazon crew after that, which I right. thought was pretty badass. Yeah, which I feel like that's the only reason they kept Barbara around. It's like, well, she's the only notable lesbian character. Well, I mean, she's bisexual, but right. the only major lesbian character in the show. And, you know, we need someone as a strong female character. Because, like, Tabitha, we established clearly being with Butch, so she's sympathetic to men. Although, I guess not. I, th- that's not terribly clear. But they wanted a really strong, like, you know, feminist angle with the characters. Which is fine. I think it, that was a cool twist when that happened. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, and you know Tabitha's always been relegated as a pretty much a side character too. Yeah, so she's, she's yeah. kind of with whoever they need her to be with, and it's like, meh. Mm-hmm. Well, she's obviously supposed to be the inspiration for Catwoman, so they keep giving her Catwoman like traits. And I suspect that was not even the case either, but they kind of just it fell backwards into her being the mentor because <laughs> it's like at first she was just the dominatrix sister of the other character that no one remembers. I kind of feel like as soon as they gave her the whip, I think that they were planning on making her some sort of inspiration because it's like okay, like yeah, she's got the leather outfit and the whip, which is pretty much like yeah. I wonder if like if Selena took is going to take some of this from from her character. Hmm. Yeah. Which did... Oh, oh I gotta say, though, my favorite kill that this season was just the most bizarre... Like, again, Gotham is his best when he goes overkill, and my favorite one was near the end. Those two people got crushed by the wrecking ball. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when uh, when Juris Chet just goes like, you know what? There's no negotiating this time. Click, and he just squashes oh, them right yeah. there. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> just... <laughs> I'm just like, she's Gotham. It's just like these splattered remains all under the Ricky Paul. It was just, it was so gruesome. I loved it. Yeah, I, I, for, I had forgotten about that. That was pretty good. Um, also, <laughs> is this the season, or is it was a previous season where Selena dies and then comes, gets resurrected by cats? Oh, uh, so she didn't technically die. Cause remember, that was last season where she got resurrected by Ivy's plants cause she fell out of the window. Which, okay, okay among other things, where did Bruce, Bruce's clone go? Dude, there's a lot of questions that I have in regards to Bruce's clone, <laughs> Selena's sort of resurrection, maybe not, and maybe having cat powers. Who knows? Uh, there's like, uh, a, like obviously there's certain plot elements that Gotham is just like, well, we don't care about that anymore. Like it's just. And it, it's it, it, everything is uh, we're just going to treat that like it was all t- wrapped up and taken care of. And there's no lingering questions about it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, mean, I think like, yeah, that, um, maybe they might explain that. Although next season, from what I hear, is a truncated season. So how much could they cover in a shortened season? Because if they're wrapping it up, it feels like it almost feels like this next season, which I mean, I'm sure we'll get into spoilers. Is You know, I, yeah, I'll say that. I'll say that for later because yeah. I'm just like. The way that they're going to structure the next season is going to be really interesting to resolve any of those threads, if any of those threads will get resolved. Uh, (laughs) My guess is going to be none of them. Like, if if Gotham has dropped it, they don't usually go back and pick up any threads or, like, this is an interesting thing that we dropped before. They're usually more moving, like, moving ahead like a shark, kind of like, no, always moving forward. Go, Let's go to the new thing rather than resolve anything old. You guys don't really care about this, right? Let's, Let's keep going. Like, I loved how they brought in well, Hugo except for Strange, Jerome, they're like, finally, oh. like, like, with his thing, like, oh, yeah, he's still kicking around. Right. Yeah, I forgot, like, he shows up, like, the very last episode, where you're just like, oh, where have you been this whole time? <laughs> they only need him when it's plot convenient. Mm. <laughs> yeah, his, his role as a major villain has pretty much been over the last season, so. Well, again, he's one of those villains that only <laughs> has one particular note of Mad Scientist, so. He does it well, though. Yeah, you can't really keep, after his big initial season, it's hard to keep him around and not have him get boring. So they keep, like, like with a lot of characters, they keep popping him in, out, in and out when it serves the story. And, like, he'll just drop in out of, like, drop out of existence. Because. Yeah, plus that actor was a little busy, so. Yeah. I thought it was fun. And then, you know, and of course, it, because it's like Gotham, where people can hide in Gotham for years and never be discovered, even though it's simultaneously the smallest and largest city in the <laughs> fucking world. Like, it is, it is somehow three square blocks, uh, square, three square city blocks where like, uh, like a good 10,000 people live. Right. Like, I, like, I still have no idea of the geography of Gotham. Like, how are we still- Although we do also know, we also know, too, that no matter where people can hide, it's really easy to get into the police station and into Bruce's house. No matter what no matter what you want to do, they never invest in locks or, you know, bars on the right. door or windows. Dude, up your security. 
Like, you're a billionaire. I, they even joke about it at one point, just like, man, for all the money you spend, you are, you have the worst security in the world. <laughs> Dude, run into the back cave. Like that's what you have it for, right? Jesus. Oh, oh, I forgot. Don't, that reminded me. Uh, the they do have a bat cave too, and they're still trying to uh, introduce him as Batman because that souped up car that he gets—that's totally the Batmobile mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> later in the season. Oh, that was great! <laughs> like that's cool. And then his his costume is okay. Like is his? They abandoned it really quickly, though. Yeah, they they dropped it almost immediately. Mm. Like it was as soon as like two episodes in, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna get rid of this." So I pretty much just imagine. <laughs> we're Gotham... gonna wait for the actual costume. I pretty much just imagine Gotham being in a literal Twilight Zone. We're just like, yeah, it happens wherever and whenever we want it to. <laughs> yeah. Although they did allude to him what he's going to look like in the next, like, like if they ever actually do full costume Batman in that weird hallucinatory dream sequence that he had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I actually got to hope, like, the also, last episode they do it. Like, they give us a little bit of Batman in this universe. I'm sure they will. That has to be the ending. Although, sorry, I know I'm just sidetracking with these points, but the last thing I did love, um, before we go to the spoiler section... That crazy dream that Bruce has where he sees everyone, like, Penguin is in his, like, full Tim Burton Batman mode with a top yeah. hat, and then Gordon's got a, <laughs> Gordon's got a mustache, finally! Jim Gordon's <laughs> got a mustache, and, uh, he's kind of, like, also his dad, like, it's, it's weird. It's very surreal. Yeah, but it's fun, <laughs> for sure, like, it's a real fun time. Yeah, that was at least where it was like, okay, now we're starting to fix the Bruce angle a little bit better. It was, it, they still did a lot of damage to it that it needs to keep going and fixing it, but... <laughs> Yeah, that was that was a pretty much. Well, speaking of the spoiler section, we should we just get to it and uh, talk about some of the bigger moments near the end here and where the show might uh, be do going. Do we want to give any ratings for it? Or yeah, I was gonna just go into the the our our, our ratings and uh, okay. I mean I've said I said my piece on this season uh, and this uh, and the show overall. I I mean I love it. It doesn't really. The, the only time it really slows down is with trying to keep characters around like that's when it almost feels the most like cw where it's like we don't really have a use for this character anymore but we like the actor and we want to keep them around for other reasons so i'm still not very much sold on lee uh or barbara as much on this point but barbara gets a lot more interesting near the end of the season and lee near the end of the season has a chance to revamp herself again uh which (laughs) is going to be interesting so I'll tell you what, I like, I think this season is very solid yet again. Uh, like I said, it's probably my second favorite season of Gotham, just because I thought some of the other ones had a little more wonky stuff hanging on with them. Like season, like season one was still getting its feet, and then season three seemed to kind of like, I, some of the elements I'm not sure where it was going with. Um, I'm gonna give this one four, um, evil, uh, uh, Bruce clones that seem to have dropped out of existence out of five. <laughs> uh, Travis, what do you think? Yeah, no, I agree that, oh, well, this show is just, it's Gotham at its Gothamiest. Um, it just keeps upping the ante. And for a show like this, it kind of works where it's like, we're going to go crazier. I'm like, yeah, you, you do, you Gotham. You just, you keep upping that bar. Um, but I do agree that I'm like, maybe I should just, like, rather than just recycling the same, like, three overused female characters you just introduce like new actually like thought out ones would be nice but i mean lee and barbara are fine ivy's still weird and i don't know if i like her that much uh, she's like the closest thing we get to like a constant magic character because like i've got plant powers i'm like <laughs> yeah sure do <laughs> yeah sure do they're science-based kind of i think <laughs> yeah until she had to go get magic pills from like a Chinese like apothecary. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yo, what the heck was that? Yeah. That, that, that that Chinese pharmacist dude just like don't take the drugs. If you take drugs, bad things happen. Yeah. <laughs> Here, take this mugwai instead. <laughs> <laughs> but I I liked like I actually kind of like Sophia, even though she did kind of fall out. Uh, Professor Pig was real fun. Um, I liked it. The villains were much more interesting than Jervis Dutch because he stuck around for way too long last season which is probably my least favorite thing of the previous season overall though still a grand old fun time we love gotham because it's fun and not because it's necessarily always good um i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten all right justin what do you think yeah i mean i feel like i'm a broken record each of these season reviews i say like gotham is just so much fun it's 
insane. It's goofy. It's very com. It's even more comic booky than other comic book shows. But that's why I like it better than mm-hmm. most of the other shows. It knows that it is insane because comic books. When you read comic books, they're crazy. They're they're ludicrously over the top most of the time. And this one found a way to kind of match it. So yeah, I will say that it's not my favorite season. I think hmm. You know, I don't, it's hard to say, like, if, like, the last season or the season before that was my favorite, they all kind of start to blend together right. at some point. Like, they each have their weaknesses and their strengths where they kind of even out, they cancel out and even out each other Well, they're also a more or less, like, the the first, like, seasons one through three are two seasons smashed together anyway with a uh, uh, split, like, a down the middle between mm-hmm. their stories. So Yeah, and this season has enough content for get any two or three scenes of any other show, right. to be fair. So, yeah, so I would give this uh, four out of five crazy Riddler game shows. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one called? It was like, it, it was something, I don't know. It was something really uh, catchy, like Wheel of Death or something. Oh, yeah, it was like Wheel of Misfortune or something Wheel like that. Wheel of here. Misfortune. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, there was almost a point where I'm like, I know, like, this show is as insanely violent as it is, and this season, I would almost argue, is even more violent than previous seasons, but I kind of wanted to see what the sack of rabid uh, rats would look like when that happened. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So, um, I'm oh, sorry, did you get a, give it a number rating then? Are you, uh, I forgot. Oh, what yeah, it? yeah, four out of five. Four out of five. Four okay, five. so it was the same as me. All right. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if like, we came uh, across, because it sounded like you liked it. Uh, more than me, but, uh. Well, I, I liked it more, like, it's one of those things where it's like, I liked it just as much as last season, but I also say that its strengths were better than some of the last season's strengths, but its weaknesses were more notable than some of the other season's mm. weaknesses. Okay, okay, I gotcha. So. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us, Justin. Uh, we are about to head into the spoiler section, but I would like for the people to know, uh, if they want to like to skip that, uh, and just watch the season, we, you know, fully understand that. But before we get to it, I want people to know where they can find you on the internet, Justin. Well, you can find me on oneofus.net. Uh, not as crazy as Gotham, a lot more consistent. <laughs> we have, uh, a lot of great stuff like the Breakfast Pub, which I write the notes for. It's a weekly news podcast, which Travis and Nick were just on, and I, I think the episode should be up on the forums. Chris hasn't posted it up yet, so we'll see. But, um, uh, yeah, otherwise you can find me on my other review show, The Screener Squad, where we cover the biggest in straight-to-video or limited-release um, screenings. We've been getting a lot better lately with getting movies that aren't total garbage, because sure. I've been a little more, I've been a little more aggressive in trying to get better stuff. But, um, yeah, that's all fun. And then you can find me on our limited run, uh, Eye on the Prize podcast. It's all about the award season. And I know it's probably the lowest rated show on the internet, uh, or at least on the site, but who cares? I like doing it. So, <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's like the Emmys themselves just losing ratings. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's, it's even more niche than the actual niche podcast on this website, but still. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's fantastic. And everyone go please check that out. Uh, it's a, it's a fun site and everything. Uh, if you'd like to check out some of our back catalog of Netflix and Kills that we've done with Justin before, we almost all of the seasons of Gotham are up there. Uh, and yeah, I think all of them actually now. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they, they should all be up on, on the podcast there. Great. So, and then we have, you know, Justin has joined us from some of the other Netflix and Kills as well as just the regular episodes of UGO. Um, you can find that all in our iTunes feed, UGO. Uh, subscribe to us, give us a five-star review if you can, helps us out with that algorithm and helps other people find the show and enjoy it. If you'd like to follow us, follow us on Facebook at Unapologetic Geek Out or follow us on Twitter at UGO Podcast and we will give you all updates and, and, and good stuff like that. Follow us on our Twitter, which is also at UGO Podcast. I will be going to New York Comic-Con in a little bit and guess what I'm seeing there? Yes, I'm going to try and make time to see the Gotham Season 5 panel. Hmm. Uh, season 5 oh, preview. Oh, yes. Uh, with some of the cast members there, so if I am lucky enough to get into that, I will definitely be taking pictures and notes and we will be reporting back once I am back please, from that trip. Please say hi the, to them for me. I, 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 My I friend Justin says hi. <laughs> uh, he, he would have loved to do on his Joker impression for you here. I will do my best <laughs> attempt. Attempt of his Joker impression? <laughs> mm-hmm. I was, you know, it's, it's not my Joker impression. What, what is it with you doing my impressions for me? You do my impression of Chris Cox. You do my impression of the Joker. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there's something about your impressions that makes me think I can enhance them. Uh, or, <laughs> or like, I just, you know, they just need a little more tuning. Maybe they need to go through a Lazarus pit themselves to come out the other end. Oh, yes. A little changed. Um, 
But oh, and Chris put up my breakfast pub thing, so there you go. You can listen to their people. Sweet. So. And yeah. Uh, yeah, with that, we're gonna move on to the spoiler section right after this. And welcome to the spoiler section for Gotham season four. Okay. So, we're going to just jump right into it. There's a couple things I want to hit for this season. Um, one being the ultimate fa- fate of uh, Professor Pig, which happens in the middle here, uh, which I thought was actually really neat. Turns out Professor Pig is a serial killer for hire, mm-hmm. which is real interesting. A thing. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's a thing in this universe. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, only in Gotham. <laughs> yep. Only in Gotham would that, that be a fine economical decision. Like, that you would, that's a thing that you can just be hired to do. And he has, like, this fucking, like, what is it? Like, this, uh, 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 southern accent, which is so weird. <laughs> like, he, like, especially when he comes well, off as, I'm, he's playing all these different roles, like, accents as he's going on. Yeah. And it's like, this is a real one. I'm like, wow. That is, it's so. Yeah, no, I think it's that, uh, that actor, he won an, uh, a Tony Award for playing John Wilkes Booth. So oh. I'm sure they're like, oh, he can do Southern accents. Yeah, let's do that. Great, 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 great. <laughs> and then he gets shot in the face. And Sophia Falcone. What, what an unceremonious ending for that character. I, know, I was like, and then Sophia Falcone is like, oh, Jim, you idiot. Uh, you thought I was really cool with you killing my brother. And you're kind of like, yeah, Jim, this feel, this feels like you really fucked up here. Uh, <laughs> Because what was his plan? His plan was to replace Penguin with a more stable gangster? Well, cause it was the idea that, like, well, for Falcone, for all the crime that happened with him, at least it wasn't this insanity that the Penguin was doing with, like, the licensed yeah, crime stuff. Yeah, it was pretty stuff. So consistent that, crime, I guess? I don't know. Yeah, it's so like, like, making it not a monopoly would somehow balance out crime and make it more stable in the city kind of thing. Sure. So... Um, and then, yeah, they get bored of Sophia, uh, real quick after that, because only, like, three episodes later, uh, Lee kills her. Oh, it wasn't, no, 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 she was around for a while. Oh, was she? It's just, I think so. It, oh, oh, yeah, she was around for, okay. like, a good seven, seven or eight episodes. Alright, it felt faster to me for whatever reason, because honestly, I don't remember that much about Sophia Valcone after she turns. Like. Yeah, well, that's the thing, is that she's around for a bit, but I think by the time that she goes, it was about the right time. It's like, okay, she's taken over power, she's become a big, you know, crime mafioso, and now she stopped being interesting. So, gone. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. The Lee and Riddler arc ends with them both stabbing each other, which is uh, interesting. And kissing. And kissing. Like, it was just weird because Lee was finally going to leave this time. Mm, and, again. And, for the hundredth time. <laughs> and you're like... Now, this is some real mad love going on in this arc. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, of course, we get Jerome, uh, his, his ultimate plan... At first fails, but then Ra's al Ghul gets resurrected and again via Barbara. Well, Jeremiah. Or, uh, oh, sorry, so Jeremiah. And he gets, uh, uh, help from, uh, from, uh, Raish or Raz or whatever the fuck. And, uh, he. Uh, the guy from Star Trek. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so he, uh, gets, gets one over. They, they team up to, uh, set off these bombs that isolate Gotham yet again. And we get a setup for No Man's Land for next season. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, they full on go into it. They blow up the bridges. Yeah. So. So that's interesting. We already see a bunch of different types of gangs already starting to form, including Barbara's Amazon uh, uh, League of Assassins. Sirens. Or Sirens or whatever the hell. And then uh, Freeze is back uh, in a little bit. Some of the other... Scarecrow. Scarecrow's there. Uh, uh, he's got a new they outfit. They even introduce Man Bat at the end of this, where you're like, whoa, that was not what I expected in this episode. Yeah. Which was also weird, like, Jesus, okay. Uh, and... <laughs> Uh, of, it almost feels like they're setting up for Arkham City. That's pretty much what they're doing this next season. Right, right, right. Like, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, Jeremiah ends up shooting Selena, and, uh, Bruce has to, like, choose between going with her and staying behind and saving the city, and he chooses to stay behind and, and, and leave her behind. Because, of course, he does. Because, yeah, well, that's what, that's, that's Batman. That's what we know. That's what we love. Uh, yeah. Although it's funny because it's like, so now we've made Selena the, you know, where she got her spine severed and she might not be, be able to walk again. It's like, so how are they going to fix this? Because that's kind of a big change they make to make her be the target of the killing joke crippling scene. Right. Yeah, Lazarus Pits or whatever. Or cat magic. Which I did love. <laughs> I love, though, that when you, they reveal Jeremiah's costume after he turns, that it is pretty much just the killing joke version of the Joker. Yeah. Like, he's got the, the hat and, like, the, the purple suit and it's just like, okay. Uh, and, yeah, like, his whole plan is to blow up Gotham into the shape of a maze. 
<laughs> just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't sure. I don't know how this helps anyone or or does anything significant, mm. but you do you, man. You do you. I mean, clearly he's not good with other people cuz even his own followers turn on him and they're like, "Dude, you suck." Right. <laughs> and then he barbecues them. Right. <laughs> At the drop of a hat, too, like he was ready to to wipe them. <laughs> All right, play me. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, I uh uh I also like that Raz when he comes back is like, "Oh, wait a minute." You know, I'm gonna hang on to this a little while. Oh, a little while longer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the demon's head. And, uh. Which, I gotta say that, that, uh, effect of him coming back where he's kinda like half zombified was pretty cool. Yeah, it's not bad. Right. He's like the, yeah. the mummy from the mummy movies or mummy returns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and that led to one of my favorite, like, surprise kill slash not kills where it looked like they just gonna kill off Barbara for good <laughs> that season. Yeah, well, and, like, like, they're gonna, kill barbara or and then kill tabitha but then barbara actually cares enough about tabitha to give up the demon's head power Mm -hmm. which i thought was very interesting like i did not think that she had that in her which it was a good beat for the character well i mean it's nice to establish that she has something that she cares about or some sort of code of conduct like uh if she's not going to be just straight up crazy barbara it's nice to know what some of the rules are here Yep, and now that they've officially dealt with Butch and Tabitha for good again <laughs> in this season. I loved that. The whole I, the whole idea was for uh, Butch to get back to his normal self and not be the swamp creature anymore, just so Penguin can shoot him in the face. Like, <laughs> and Penguin's like, I, I don't, I a- didn't forget that you killed my mom. Like, that was a thing that you did. <laughs> to be fair, I mean. And I liked Butch. Yeah, that, is but... a, that is a long way for petty revenge. I mean, I mean, not yeah. petty, petty, but it's like, wow, you waited all that time. You put all that investment in just so you could shoot that guy in the face. Well, he had to wait for when he wasn't invincible, basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that was a. Uh, it's an interesting place they leave off on No Man's Land. There, I, uh, I, I wonder how that all shakes out and what we're gonna see in this new shortened season. See, now they're just gonna dump. Uh... Solomon Grundy's buying into a swamp. He's going to home swamp thing instead. Well, I mean, that that wouldn't be uh, shocking considering Solomon Grundy just keeps coming back no matter what anyway. He keeps getting resurrected. Yeah, well, then also, uh, apparently they're going to bring back Ed and uh, Lee, where even Strange is like, what shall I do with these two? Oh, man, <laughs> I don't like, even oh, know. Mecha, <laughs> Mecha Riddler. I want Mecha, Mecha Riddler. Riddler. <laughs> Robo Riddler. <laughs> Riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> Beep, boop, beep. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. No, I feel like this season definitely is going to be one of those, like, each episode's going to be centered around one major villain. That seems to be the angle they're going, where yeah. it's like, yeah, we're going to take, like they said, we're going to take them down one by one. So they're trying to, you know, initiate this gang war to take over each borough or each area from a different vil- major villain that episode. Right. And no matter how many times, because I'm still excited, even though Gotham has done this finale, how many fucking times yeah. now? It seems like we've... Like, five. Yeah, we've done... It like. seems like almost every season we've done the whole... The city goes crazy because of some sort of thing. Mm, Tetch virus. Like, or... the Tetch virus. Jerome drives them all crazy when he shows back up mm-hmm. at one point, And he's got, like, the thing. Um, Jeremiah, even in this season, like, makes the city evacuate via terrorist threat. Like, there, there's always this, like... Uh, they, and then even in the one season, they finally call in the National Guard, mm. which you never like. You wonder like, why do they do that any like ever again? Well, they brought back the military this season too, and they were completely ineffective. Yeah, they're pretty useless. <laughs> yeah, they suck. Um, no, I, I pretty much <laughs> imagine that the rest of the world is just normal, and it's just well, Gotham. That's the thing is like they they they, qu- they quarter off Gotham after the bridges blow up. They're like. You know what? Just right off this city. It sucks. <laughs> so, I don't blame them either. I do like that final scene of where the and Jim and the cops uh, in the cop station giving the, the rallying speech and everyone being behind him like, we're going to take this fucking city back one uh, one block at a time. Uh, yeah, he became the hero. Like, you know, again, it's like, he's the hero we need, not the hero we deserve kind of thing. It's like, yeah, you know, he he's a guy at the drop of the hat. He's ready to give his life and do what he can for the safety of other people. And that's one of the things where, as, you know, as flat as Jim can be as a character sometimes, it made me really, you know, draw to mm-hmm. him this season. It made me really like him. Yeah, I mean, we do a little bit of guilty Jim this time with Sophia Falcone, but... But then they get over it really quickly. Yeah, it, it doesn't linger a whole lot. I think the show knows that it can only do the uh, cop on the edge thing with Jim so much, because it's... It's like at least he didn't switch back from being a vigilante this season again. Right. Like they kept him a cop pretty much the whole time. 
And they let him yeah. and Harvey kind of yeah. tell each other their I told you so's and. Mm-hmm. Which I also like that Harvey actually got more to do this season. Cause I felt last season he was criminally underused. And this one's like, okay, he's not in it very long, but he has more stuff to do that's important. Well, I feel like time. the closer we get to the end game of Gotham, the more they are willing to do more major stuff in regards to character arcs and stuff like that. Cause they know they don't, yeah. they don't, they, they know they don't have to fill space for a season if they keep using these characters. Right. So, which I hope this next season is lean and efficient, you know, for that reason. It's like, yeah, we've had a lot of crazy random plot developments. This time, just full steam ahead. No filler, no randomness. Well, I feel like the only slow parts in Gotham were born of the necessity of keeping certain characters around because we can't exactly kill Riddler or Penguin or any of these main guys around. Like, we can't kill any of these people. So, it's it's inherent. (laughs) But now that we can, just like, (laughs) yeah, like now that (laughs) now anyone could basically go because. In this version of, Go- of of Gotham's universe, like, I don't know. Like, they could kill anybody, really. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Um, and the the only reason I would assume that Penguin and Riddler were safe and some of these other guys were safe is that they're serious favorites. Right. Like, they're the reason people keep tuning into the show. But if the show is wrapping well, up... That's the only reason Jeremiah became a thing, because everyone loved Jerome so much in the first season. They're like, we got to use this guy more. Right. So... I also love that they're never going to, like, they never seem they're never going to call him the Joker. So, like... Well, they established that that's a, uh, there's a legal reason for that, partly. Because yeah. it's like, WB's like, no, you can't stomp on our territory. We've got two movies coming out with Joker in it, so... Yeah. But, like, th- but they all go, like, yeah, he's basically the Joker. Yeah. Like, you don't know, like... <laughs> Yeah. Like, it, yeah, although I think it, it was either Les or somebody else uh, on the digital noise from one of us who's like, the other alternative is that technically Joker never has an origin story, so we can't ever actually say where he starts because he never starts anywhere. Sure. So. Right, he's just like a form yeah. of chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen, uh, I've seen many theories and I get it. You know what? And it's not like I don't need them to call him the Joker. Like no, it's, it's, it's fine. fine. It's, he's a fun enough character. I'm not, I'm not so queen of like, yo, just call him, like, call him Joe. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He's, he's fun. I like him. Um, anything else we want to hit in the spoiler section, guys? I mean, that was the biggest stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. It's nice to see Bruce, like, th- it's funny that last scene with them on the tower, on the rooftop with the, um, the light fly- sh- 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 uh, shining in the sky. So, I mean, he's okay with having this 17 year old kid helping him out because. It's masturbations. Oh, you know what? I never even thought about that. <laughs> Like, <laughs> like I guess he just was totally cool with any help he, he could get. It's probably at this point, he's gotten so used to, like, trying to get Bruce out of trouble. It's like, you know, it's probably just easier to keep a track on being on my side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Though it makes me wonder, too, it's like, so are they going to know, like, like are they going to reveal that he's actually Batman once he starts becoming Batman to Jim? Like, that would be an interesting angle to play. I mean, they almost have to. I mean, in this universe, it'd be real weird if some guy started to run around using martial arts and real we- uh, and real expensive gadgets to kick the shit out of people, and he already knows Bruce w- billionaire Bruce Wayne does vigilante work. That it it it, <laughs> it would make it really d- hard for us to not believe that Jim Gordon couldn't connect the dots. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> I mean, Selena pretty much fully knows. Like, once he starts becoming Batman, it's like, oh yeah, Selena's like. Yeah, I've seen that car before. I know where that is. Yeah, he it, like Selena will definitely know once he starts doing his thing. Like, there's almost no question. And then uh, Jim, you know, Jim may not be the smartest cop all the time, mm-hmm. but I mean, still, he's, he's not still a, one of the smarter cops. He's he's not a complete moron. So yeah, although he still has that impulse problem of shooting first, asking questions never, because he'll just you know kill off other side characters, no, not even a second hesitation. He does seem to only <laughs> save the words freeze for the bigger guys right like no sometimes he'll say freeze and then shoot them too i just so. like you, you didn't know this too where sometimes he would say freeze and then not give the person an opportunity to do what he said I and mean, just shoots him anyway and gotham you well, know that toy maker guy stop. especially where he's like freeze boom and he just shoots that dude right there <laughs> like i mean <laughs> I, I mean a half second of like Okay, he's not freezing, just, but he almost says freeze, and before the war syllable even leaves his mouth, he's shooting him. <laughs> like, but, I mean, you know, uh, in a, in a city like Gotham. Yeah, it is Gotham. I mean. Yeah, usually it's a safer bet to shoot first, cause you never know when that guy's gonna come back and murder your whole family or something. Well, I mean, in Gotham, it's actually a legit, uh, a defense in court, I think, of just like, well, I didn't think a bullet would kill him. <laughs> like, or, it's like, we can bring him back, don't worry. I just thought we had a Lazarus picked <laughs> next door, or that he was wearing a mech suit. It, I, 
<laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's been so long since I've dealt with a carjacker. I don't know how to do it anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, thinking of which, are they ever going to bring back Barnes? Oh well, no. Um, yeah, probably not. He's okay. <laughs> he's a. He, I know. I feel stupid for asking. He's a, a, a neat enough character, but he his costume comes off as super silly. Yeah, and he. Maybe you, maybe one episode, I, uh, but I doubt it still because like the, No Man's Land is for the big people. Like No Man's Land is for yeah. Riddler, Freeze, Firefly, um, the, maybe Scarecrow. Ma- yes, yeah, Scarecrow Penguin. and like all all the big ones to get established and uh, really s- cement themselves. And for Bruce Wayne to become Batman, no one really gives a shit about the Executioner. Um, yeah, yeah. If anything, we'll see, um, Harvey. We'll see Harvey Dent probably in there. I would imagine we- Maybe? That, that actor didn't even show up this season. No, I, so. it's been a while and I kind of miss him. Like, well, aren't we gonna do, like, a, a little setup with Harvey Dent? And, yeah, I kind of forgot about him entirely. Well, he's kind of one of the only- yeah. he, he actually is a good guy up until he becomes Two-Face in the regular continuity. Mm. So he's not exactly that interesting until he becomes Two-Face. But still, it, it's weird that he's not just- there. around yeah like he seems like a pretty easy asset to go for people to go look at that he's got the coin and and, and stuff mm. and you know yeah and it's just interesting because they, they are introducing some more side villains so i'm curious if, like if they're gonna be actually major parts or if they're just gonna be like expendable people to get rid of in this next yeah like just too, mini henchmen so. i still got my fingers crossed for killer moth <laughs> 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 well we got magpie so sure why not bring in someone right. else like <laughs> bring in killer moth yeah, Magpie is probably bigger than Killer Moth now that I think about it. That's pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> Killer Moth's dumb. Uh, but I am so excited I got the chance to, to talk with you about Gotham, Justin. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, I know, it's been so long, but I, I miss these talks when we do it. It's like, uh, we only have one more yeah, season one to go. Yeah, one more. We only have one more in us. Isn't that sad? That is kind of sad. Yeah. Well, okay, so let's end with this. One, one last quick thought. What do you think will be like? What's your major prediction for what you'll think will happen in this next season, other than Bruce becoming Batman? I mean, that would be the obvious thing for me to go to mm-hmm. is that the final episode is just him in a regular day in Gotham and us showing him a little bit of the bat suit. Um, my, I guess my major prediction is just uh, now that uh, Razal Ghul is back is him confronting him but not killing him this time and them doing well no but he's dead remember they killed him in the last uh episode. oh right 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 that's i, I <laughs> that's, actually forgot the only predictions i think that, that already I happened i forgot that he died again i <laughs> forgot like <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, 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 cause yeah, he, Bruce did confront him and not kill him this time and had Barbara do it instead. I totally forgot. Um, well, no, cause Barbara, what, what it was is that they were fighting and Barbara just gr- put the knife in Bruce's hand and, th- and, uh, and uh, you know, pretty much flung him yeah, into right. Roz. He's like, <laughs> and, and she's really like, technically counts, technically counts. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that Barbara's story will end, uh, tragically. There's no way her story ends nice. Uh, Tabitha almost assuredly has to die. She has nothing left to do to, to contribute to the group like, since yeah. uh, Butch is is done. Penguin Penguin will probably definitely survive because he's an audience favorite and no one wants to see him die. Um, I think Harvey will die. Uh, I I wouldn't rule it out. He's such a he's such a figure in the the series that it it would make sense for uh jim coming into his own after his men- kind of mentor has died after mm. a big noble sacrifice one final big redemption for harvey would yeah which they they did a lot to redeem him this season even with um what was it, the whole thing with the rooftops the whole thing with the bomb yeah. so i think if he did go out with one big final heroic moment that would be that would be fine with me you know, kind of thing. Yeah, and then I think that uh, most of the season will just be the final conflict, establishing Bruce versus some of his early villains and establishing those relationships up until the final battle between him and Jeremiah, really solidifying things, and then... Oh, so do you think, Jer- do you think Jeremiah will be the final villain that he faces? I'm thinking that it's going to be set up like that, and maybe we have a switcheroo and face off against someone later still, but I figure there's only... I feel like it just makes sense that Jer- since Ra- uh, Rachel Gula is gone, that Jeremiah would be the final conflict uh, among uh, among whoever's left. Yeah. Well, and to be fair, he did see the vision that Ra- Ray showed him, so it's like, yeah, that, that would make sense actually. Where it's like he's the guy who knows where this is going. Yeah. Ultimately, I mean, I wouldn't yeah. be uh, I wouldn't be surprised since it's no man's land uh, to see Bane around as mm-hmm. well. 
True. Uh, uh, which they said they're interesting Bane's dad at least, so maybe Bane is around the corner. Oh, okay. Like so <laughs> yeah. at least maybe a little bit of setup too. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say because again, with this being the final season, they can go balls out as much as they want. I don't know. Do you have yeah, any, they can do anything? Do you have a prediction, Travis? At all? Not really. Cause like, like I just said, it's like they can. They don't have to worry anymore. We're like, oh, we need set up for more seasons. We have to prolong this for this next season. We have to continue on. Like, no, they can just do whatever fuck they want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How about you, Justin? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think my biggest one would be that I think Bullock's not going to make it for the end of the season, which would be sad, but it's like, yeah, I think that would help make his character worth it. Because, I mean, Bullock is usually not present during the main part of the Batman story anyways, so. Right. But um, otherwise, uh, I kind of want to see Jim get that mustache back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I almost feel like, I would feel like the ending of this uh, series could be, like, an epilogue where, like, they show, like, the future of Gotham, which could be kind of cool. I mean, I'm not counting on it, because, you know, that could leave the door open for if they ever do a revival or a spinoff, which may or may not happen, who cares. But, you know, just the idea, it's like, yeah, this is where the future of the story goes. We see, like, maybe another actor is, like, a slightly older Bruce Wayne or something like that. Although, it's going to be hard to match somebody who has that same exact height, because he's, like, towering over everybody this show now. God, he, he shot he up. He spread like a beanpole. He, he really <laughs> yeah. grew a lot in the last couple of years. I know. I don't think they've predicted that. They're just like, whoa! Oh. <laughs> also, again, it'll make it harder for him to keep an identity. He's like, so who's the other six foot five <laughs> people that we have wandering around this city? <laughs> just give him, give him a mugshot line be like, uh... Yeah, uh it was that one. It was probably him. It was that one, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, not again! Uh, but yeah, thank you for talking Gotham with us, Justin. It's been an absolute blast. Uh, we're gonna get on out of here, and until season five, guys, we're on Apology to Geek Out, and we're, we're out. out.